there's this interesting article that I wanted to also talk about regarding Elon Musk on Business Insider. Elon Musk has had a really interesting, I feel like, last what, maybe two and a half years or something, where his public persona, reputation, or how he's just looked at has really changed and for the worse. And it's odd for me because I came into being an Elon Musk fan mostly based on startup stuff, right? With him being an entrepreneur, with him being a tech guy, with all the stuff, you know, regarding SpaceX, all the things regarding Tesla, the boring company, which is something that I've been obsessed with for the minute zero, right? This idea of, you know, um, alleviating traffic in metropolitan areas by having all these tunnels that cars could go under and stuff and having these little buses that people could get in and stuff and get people A and B really quickly and shit. All stuff is really incredible to me, especially when, uh, when I saw that SpaceX stuff for the point-to-point -point travel, which I think has been scrapped for now, but that seemed amazing. The idea that you could get in a SpaceX, in a SpaceX rocket, which back in the day I think was called a BFR, and you could basically do a point to point travel and get from like New York to London in a couple of hours, if not an hour's time, which would obviously completely change and, you know, transform travel as we know it. Um, so I looked at him as that. And obviously, having read the Ashley Vance um, book on Elon Musk, which is one of the best, I feel like I still haven't finished the actual autobiography by Walter Isaacson that's behind me. But there's a really good Ashley Vance um, book that I kind of listened to on an audio book that was incredible. But ever since then, with his, with his, I feel like, with his um with his need to want to be in the public eye and how exposed he is you're hearing more of it on and it doesn't sound good so that's why maybe reputation is kind of floundered so i'm interested to see what this business inside the article is about but the title of the business article business side of the article is elon musk luck has finally run out and obviously i'll put the link in the description for those of you that want to read it yourself so it says elon musk was on a heater from 2019 to 2022 it seemed as if every gamble that elon musk took was paying off tesla was consistently profitable for the first time in its history and the stock soared as its massive new Shanghai plant ramped up production. SpaceX rockets captivated the public's attention. Accusation of corruption and self-dealing um, slid off Musk's back, and Musk could do and say anything he wanted. Then Musk did what every risk addicted blackjack player inevitably does. He pushed his luck too far. Overconfidence, confirmation bias, and delusions of uh, delusions of grandeur assuming control led to a string of bad decisions. And boom, Elon's empire is in trouble again. The change of fortune has apparent at the New York Times deadlock um, dead book conference last week. Yeah, I remember this one. During an interview with host uh, uh, Andrew Ross Sorkin, the recognisable tells uh, Musk's hand had gone cold where every, um, were everywhere. Um, he raged at the very people who would di dictate um, Twitter's fate. He seemed baffled by the questions about the future of his companies and offered no apologies for his unhinged antisocial behaviour online. Sorkin suggested Musk's brain is like a storm, but it sounded like two cats fighting to get out of a duffel bag. If anything, I feel like maybe Musk is going through that same thing that Ye goes through, where when you make as much money and you're as successful as those guys, it can be really maybe insulting to your intelligence to have people question your decisions, to have people doubt you, to have people maybe ask you to explain yourself or whatever it may be. It can just really piss you off and kind of, you know, make you double down on whatever decisions that you do make or stance that you have just to spite them maybe that's part of it maybe that success makes you think that you're impervious to feedback pushback critique or whatever it may be who knows it continues um this ladies and gentlemen is what it looks like when musk realizes he's in a jam entirely of his own making i know because we've seen it before including back in 2018 when he nearly flew tesla into the mountain he may find a way to ward off calamity as he did then but his jam is much tighter than the last one musk has contended um with over 13 billion of debt we're still weighing down a swiftly sinking twitter tesla's profits are shrinking because of a lack of demand and the new products and the world is generally sick of his shtick in musk land everything is connected by money problems are one problems are one problems at one business bleeding to others and that's why elon is exceptionally obstinate and it's not just an imagination his luck has changed i disagree with this i feel like there's a lot of glee obviously business insider have a lot of like you know they're frothing at the mouth for elon to fail but i think one of the things that's that kind of i feel like put is is gonna help elon and someone like a yay too they are geniuses when it comes to the products that they put out and people love them so much so i feel like if elon decides to take a step back from the public eye and not be as visible not be as vocal and let his products and his company speak for themselves i feel like that 
you know, whatever bad sentiment is being levied against these companies or him personally will definitely wane. But the more they speak, the more they're in the public eye, the more they're caught in public attention or whatever it may be, that's when things kind of change. But because the product is so good, if he just decides to go quiet for a couple of months, it all kind of resets again. So I don't think it's that big of an issue. If anything, the other issue is more so the idea of like how many corporate interests has he actually pissed off, right? Like how many people with the actual money to actually turn these lights off has he annoyed? We saw it happen with Ye, right? He, 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 he pushed the line way too far and it got to a point where the money people said okay enough and they basically turned his lights off and obviously now he's okay because you know he's probably got funds in the bank and stuff but no corporate you know entity wants to touch him with a barge pole so that's where it becomes a bit tetchy it continues 2018 the first annus um horribleness it says if you want to understand musk um unhinged behavior it's helpful to understand the reasons that he lashed out in the past so let me take you back to 2018 when musk had bet the test of future on model 3 with the intended starting price of 30 grand the car was supposed to make evs accessible for drivers who wouldn't um who couldn't afford luxury prices but tesla's investors got increasingly restless as the model became trapped in what musk called production hell the pressure to get that model 3 out clearly weighed on musk and he was not su and he was not subtle about it on tesla's first call to earning call he cut off one of the analyst's basic financial questions saying that boring boneheaded questions are not cool he got so frustrated that he ditched the analyst entirely and started talking taking questions from fans posting on youtube eventually he, he even big um begged skeptical tesla investors to please sell our stock and when musk is at his most hungry for cash he tends to bite the hand that feeds him musk also became more active on twitter around this time often with erratic results when a professional diver complained that musk was distracting from efforts to rescue children um soccer team had been trapped in a cave in thailand musk called the diver a pedo guy and harassed him on twitter i still don't get why he got so annoyed at that guy for calling him out and then honestly maybe it's just like a fragile ego thing but that was one of the strangest things i wonder if they actually had a history prior to that maybe they, they had some sort of running back in college or something but that seemed oddly weird how he got so touchy of that guy that diver that was said hey you don't know what you're talking about it continued he used the platform to whine about the media, attack his investors, belittling against um, the Tesla stock, and even tweeted that he would be taking Tesla private at the price of $420 a share. And when there was no such deal in place, Tesla, Musk later admitted, was near death, and the summer's production hell was about to turn into an auto logistics um, hell. Um, it continues here. Tesla's salvation came in the form of a Chinese Communist Party. In 2019, executives were fleeing Tesla and the company continued to bleed cash. Musk struck a deal to build a factory in Shanghai. From permitting the destruction of the, to the opening, the Shanghai Gigafactory was built in just 168 working days. Skeptical observers, myself included, were blindsided. What we failed to appreciate was the staggering power of the CCP when it's aggressively pushing to meet a single goal. When the party said Tesla would build a factory there and that, in, and that meant immediately without china tesla would not have finally turned into a real car company and in musk words he dodged the destruction and started to settle down and focus on the products and um, projects like starlink i'm sure he was still wild, wilding out on twitter but at least he wasn't bawling so bawling to rolling stone about how badly he needs a girlfriend to be happy at last it seemed that musk was the universe and had something frenzied at equilibrium generally there are two different lessons a person could take from survival having a brush with near ruin they can learn to be more ca uh, cautious or they can decide that they are indestructible and tempt faith i don't think i need to tell you which path must chose so let's just go down to the bottom last paragraph here and i will continue the last paragraph says wall street should be thoroughly embarrassed according to reports the banks told in holding twitter's debts are already expecting to take a two billion hit when they confirmed firmly sell off it's not hard to see why i've said from the jump that there was no money in this twitter venture and no principles either musk is always going to turn twitter into a reflection of his limited view or his earth as he put it during his manic ramblings on dead on deal book i never expected musk fanboys to understand that but i did un expect bankers who are supposed to understand who pays for what in the media business to get it in the end there's a real chance wall street investors will wind up owning the shambolic mess that is twitter slash x one of the few blessings to come from this fiasco is that when that happens at least we'll know what not to do with it 
uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I still think he's going to turn it around. I feel like um, X Twitter is the best it's ever been, personally. I feel like it's way more fun because there's way more psychos on there, way more unhinged people that are really, really pushing the needle. And I'm all for it. So I think he's going to turn around. I think he's going to figure it out. And again, you've got things like Starlink that he could easily end up selling and taking public and shit. Um, Tesla still got a few tricks up their sleeve. The success of the Cybertruck is going to be really, um, I feel like, unexpected for a lot of people, especially if it ends up launching in Europe. Um, especially when you, if you look at the fly-by wire design of the steering, essentially they can make it right hand drive very, very easily because there's no actual, you know, um, there's no actual infrastructure that's connecting the wheel to the actual axle itself at the front. So it's got that really strange fly by wire thing that's really cool. You should actually check it out. So that's going to make it easier. And hopefully, if they can get it to comply with the fucking safety regulations here in Europe, that's going to change things. So there's loads of things that can kind of, you know, they can get cash from and change things in the future. So I'm really looking forward and eager to it. And again, there's always the other side of Twitter too when it comes to the, you know, the content creation, monetization side of things as well that might change. And who knows? Maybe Elon goes on the apology to and you end up getting all the advertisers back on twitter as well and that end up more changing things as well so there are loads of avenues and hope and hope still there when it comes to elon and twitter so it's not all doom and gloom but you know i feel like a lot of people out there aren't really hot on elon a lot of people out there aren't really hot on elon